In 2000, Real Madrid thrashed Valencia in the first All-Spanish Champions League final. In 2003, AC Milan edged out Juventus in the first All-Italian Champions League final. And in 2008, in the first All-English Champions League final, Manchester United and Chelsea were destined for a penalty shootout. The two clubs have been locked in a heated rivalry all season. They had traded wins in the league, but ultimately, United had prevailed by two points in the Premiership. They were both surprised in the cup, Chelsea by Barnsley and United by Portsmouth. And as Carlos Tevez stepped up to a spot for the Red Devils, they were tied at the Luzhniki Stadium in Moscow after 120 minutes of football. Frank Lampard had cancelled out Cristiano Ronaldo's opener and in extra time Didier Drogba saw red for slapping Nemanja Vidic's face. The match was balanced finally. Tevez along with Michael's Karik and Balak and Giuliano Belletti all converted their penalties with ease. Next though, the man who couldn't stop scoring all season suddenly stopped. Cristiano Ronaldo drove the ball into Petacek. Chelsea had the advantage. Penalties were converted from Frank Lampard and Ashley Cole for Chelsea and Owen Hargreaves and Nani for Manchester United until the fate of the Champions League was whittled down to one kick. An early sudden death. Would it be a third title for United or a first for Chelsea? John Terry, in place of Didier Drogba who was slated for the fifth kick, strode up to the ball and at the vital moment his standing foot slid out from underneath him. His kick slammed against the post. A red reprieve. Anderson and Solomon Kalou converted to make it five apiece. Ryan Giggs, who had broken Sir Bobby Charlton's appearance record that night from the bench, struck United's sixth. Nicholas and Elko was next. He drove his penalty into the hands of Edwin van der Sar. United were champions of Europe for the third time, and Chelsea's first time at the Champions League final was to end in defeat. Chelsea would have to wait until 2012 to win their only Champions League trophy, but John Terry, who so painfully missed in Moscow, would also be missing in Munich. David Luiz came into the squad for the final in lieu of JT's suspension, a final which again, for Chelsea, went to the dreaded penalty shootout. However, this time, a Chelsea centre-half in David Luiz would score, and Didier Drogba with the final kick of his first spell at Chelsea won the Champions League with Chelsea's fifth kick. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly, and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... John Terry didn't slip from the penalty spot in the 2008 Champions League final. John Terry's penalty arrowed into a side netting in Moscow and blue jubilation filled the city for the remainder of the night. United had missed out on their third Champions League whilst Chelsea had claimed their first. Manchester United were forced to part ways with Cristiano Ronaldo, who had scored so freely for them the previous season with 44 in all competitions. An £80 million bid from Real Madrid was too good to refuse. They couldn't replace him in the summer as Sir Alex Ferguson missed out on prime transfer targets such as Rubinho, Wesley Snyder and Bastian Schweinsteiger. Without the firepower up front, Luis Sahar stayed on for a further season at Old Trafford. Meanwhile at Stamford Bridge, Avram Grant signed an extension of his contract upon winning the Champions League. By November the 30th, however, Grant would lose his job after a 2-0 home defeat to Newcastle United, leaving Chelsea as low as 8th. Ray Wilkins steadied the ship the following week as caretaker boss winning 1-0 at the Reebok over Bolton until Gus Hiddink took interim charge for the Champions League tie at home to CFR Cluj. Chelsea scraped a 1-0 win at Stamford Bridge to confirm their place in the knockout stage on goal difference. The tide in the league turned as Chelsea picked up a point at Old Trafford and carved out a 1-0 win at Anfield. United's grip on the league faded with a 5-1 home thrash into Liverpool and a Zalton Gera inspired Fulham down at Craven Cottage in March. The latter results saw Chelsea leapfrog United into second under the Hiddink Premiership, however they were still six points adrift of Liverpool. They would only drop points at White Hart Lane in the final nine matches, but would fall short of Liverpool by just three points. Both Liverpool and Chelsea would lose out in the Champions League knockout phase to one team, or perhaps more accurately, to one man, Cristiano Ronaldo. The Portuguese forward netted three across both ties in the last 16 against Liverpool before netting twice in a 2-0 home win over Chelsea in the quarter-finals. After beating Barcelona in the semi-final, Real Madrid and Ronaldo would travel to Rome to meet Arsenal, who had dispatched Manchester United 1-0 on aggregate in the semi-final. Chelsea claimed the FA Cup in Hiddink's final act as interim manager before he returned to the Russian national team. After a transitional year after losing Cristiano Ronaldo, Manchester United were finally able to recoup his loss by signing Karim Benzema from Lyon and Dimitar Berbatov from Tottenham. Berbatov had scored the winning penalty in the League Cup final against Manchester United the previous February. Change was afoot at Stamford Bridge too, as Carlo Ancelotti took the helm. The league title would come down to the all-important clash on April 3rd at Old Trafford. Ancelotti's Chelsea took the lead through Joe Cole, only for Karim Benzema to level the tie up almost immediately. Didier Drogba, albeit a foot or two offside, struck what seemed to be the winner until Federico Makeda seemingly handled the ball over the line to snatch a late, late equaliser for United. 
This left Chelsea trailing United by just two points and even an eight goal thumping of Wigan at home on the final day couldn't give them a third league title in five years. United wrapped up the league with a home win versus Stoke. United and Chelsea traded bragging rights over the domestic cups as United prevailed in the League Cup over Villa and Chelsea claimed the FA Cup with victory against Portsmouth. Liverpool had significantly dropped off, trailing in third by nine points whilst Arsenal rounded off the top four on 75. Arsenal wouldn't fare as well continentally as they were dumped out in the quarterfinals one round further than Liverpool, who would be eliminated at the last 16 stage by Real Madrid once more, with Cristiano Ronaldo at the peak of his powers. United and Chelsea rattled along, almost in competition with each other despite being on different halves of a draw. Wayne Rooney's broken foot was not risked ahead of the return leg at home to Bayern Munich with Benzema and Berbatov up front. A 4-1 win ensured they would be reunited with Cristiano Ronaldo in the semi-final. Chelsea had a reunion of their own in the last 16 stage where they put out former manager Jose Mourinho and his Inter Milan team. CSKA and Moscow were relatively easy opponents in the last eight, no offence CSKA, before meeting Barcelona in the semis. It seemed fate, especially with the final being played at the Bernabeu that both Chelsea and United would step aside for two Spanish clubs and end this particular scenario with a fairy tale ending, and so it would prove. And on home soil, Real Madrid put Barcelona to the sword with two strokes of genius from Cristiano Ronaldo in a match dubbed Ronaldo vs Messi. Real won 2-1, Messi naturally getting Barcelona's goal, La Decima was sealed. Let's slip into the winners and losers. Manchester United, losers because they swapped out their 2009 league title for one a year on, but ultimately wouldn't make another Champions League final. Real Madrid, winners, because La Decima was claimed a few years earlier and they managed to retain the Champions League through Cristiano Ronaldo. Liverpool, winners, because they ended their wait for a Premier League title in 2009 thanks to the weakened Chelsea and Manchester United sides. This video was made as part of the What If Football launch day. Each week, starting from Monday morning, a new scenario will be published right here on YouTube.